morning, my name is Josh from Cyclones Oz and this is your latest weather forecast update for Sunday the 28th of December 2025. Still a lot to get through today, particularly for northern Queensland where a large low pressure system is currently intensifying and nearing on tropical cyclone status just on the coast of the Gulf of Carpentaria. Extremely heavy rainfall is forecast to occur across much of northern and far northern Queensland in the next couple of days and that's shifting our focus from southern Australia which is remaining clear and dry and towards northern Australia as this monsoon really ramps up. All the details plus a whole lot more coming up in today's weather forecast update but if you uh, first please do consider subscribing we're nearing in on 70,000 here on YouTube and that will be massively appreciated if we get there by the end of the year. Let's jump into the details though up in northwestern Queensland this is a full-blown tropical low and this one has some punch. If we really zoom in on the radar imagery here you can see we've got a defined area of low pressure right on the Carpentaria coastline and this system here is looking almost cyclonic in nature. I mean you can see a bit of an eye wall beginning to develop here particularly in the latest satellite frames as this system tracks down into towards the southeast and is expected to cross over Burkton in the next six hours or so. It's a slow-moving, large low-pressure system and it is a recipe for rainfall up in towards northwestern Queensland. There is a bit of a northerly shift in the track though and I would just like to say this before I get into the forecast. Yesterday we had the low-pressure system located here towards the north of Tennant Creek and towards the east of Elliot and the system was forecast to move off in towards the south and the east-southeast moving over Gregory and then towards the north of Three Rivers where it's expected to be this morning and we've got this big northerly shift which pulls this system closer to the Gulf of Carpentaria. We talked about this in yesterday's forecast update but a system closer or within the Gulf of Carpentaria will have a better shot of becoming a tropical cyclone. It'll have a better shot of producing much more rainfall but it will also thankfully drag that rainfall out of these uh, more populated areas of northwestern Queensland particularly around Mount Isa and uh, Cloncurry. Now it hasn't necessarily done that yet. It's kind of sitting on the verge which means we're still going to get that very heavy rainfall around the Isa, around Julia Creek and Cloncurry and we're not going to see this system get up towards tropical cyclone status, at, at, at least not today. If it is going to get to cyclone status, it's got a lot of organising to do still, and I don't think Bomb will pull the trigger, considering it's still got some pretty weak winds on its southern side. But this system here, it's blowing a gale, it's producing a lot of rainfall, it's really outperforming what we did expect from the forecast models earlier. Now today is the start of the big time rainfall accumulations. We are expecting this very heavy precipitation to begin to build across northwestern Queensland, and like I said, with that northerly track that we've seen, we're likely to see this rainfall pull a little bit further towards the north than initially expected. The storm, however, is expected to begin making a bit more of a southerly track, and that is because if we have a look at our 500 millibar steering flow, the system should be pushed off down a little bit further towards the uh, south, kind of pulled in by the jet stream here and pushed off in this general direction, which should get it down towards the Mount Isa area by later tomorrow night, and that's where the heavier rainfall is expected to then occur. And this rainfall is really going to be heavy. We're expecting brief periods of intense rainfall, prolonged periods of heavy to locally intense rainfall, and lots and lots of shower activity around this system center through uh, today, Monday, Tuesday, finally easing back a little bit on Wednesday and Thursday, contracting to showers, which will then track over towards the east on Thursday and Friday. And then this system finally beginning to ease off and clear out of northwestern Queensland on Friday and Saturday. But this is not before a ton of rainfall is forecast to be dropped. We'll just turn off those observations there. And if we have a look at our rainfall accumulation map, whilst we have had a bit of a northerly shift in our heaviest rainfall accumulations, it doesn't take away from the fact that over the next five days, some extreme rainfall accumulations are forecast to occur. And there is still a bit of inconsistencies between major forecast models, particularly with the Axis and more uh, other more major forecast models. The Axis is calling for this rainfall to find itself in a bit more of a concentrated pattern. And I have to say, given the recent development in this system's track and development, I do feel that that is more likely to be the case at this point in time. So let me explain. Again, with that northerly track, instead of where it was expected to be yesterday on this dotted line, which would have this rainfall here kind of in this big circle, it's now forecast to be a little bit further north. And whilst this further north is not a massive difference, we're still expecting saturating rains around Mount Isa and Cloncurry. It's likely going to be on the less aggressive side of things now. So think two or 300 millimetres, as I've been saying for the last couple of days, as opposed to five or 600 millimetres that some others have been saying and some of the other forecast models have also been saying as well. Don't get me wrong, there's still going to be some big time rainfall accumulations here. And considering the slow moving nature of this low pressure system, particularly if it does make that southerly dive, which is expected to do so, anywhere towards the east of the storm's low pressure system, which is likely to be east of Mount Isa, is going to see some pretty significant rainfall accumulations. We're talking about Cloncurry, Julia Creek, Richmond, even down towards Winton and I would say Bullia, uh, by extension on the southern side of things, Mount Isa on the western extremities, Gregory and Stokes on the northern extremities, but we'll still see some localised very heavy rain 
rain from along the Carpentaria coastline through rivers, Julia Creek and Quangkari, as mentioned, all expected to see some very significant rainfall accumulations with the passage of this low pressure system. And it is relatively consistent between major forecast models. Today, tomorrow, Tuesday, and by extension Wednesday, triple figure rainfall accumulations can be expected at a number of locations and the potential for higher rainfall accumulations, particularly today, tomorrow and early Tuesday morning are a possibility. Into the far north Queensland coastline, we're going to be seeing a lot of convergent zone activity, but also showers streaming in from the northeast, which is going to translate to some very heavy to locally intense rainfall through much of the north and the far north Queensland coastline. The Daintree isn't expecting too much in the way of ultra significant rainfall accumulations. It's really going to be the Casbury Coast down to about Palm Island and Hinchbrook Island, and including the Harvey Ranges, so just outside of Townsville, but Tully, Innisfail, Cardwell, Ingham, Halifax, Hinchbrook, Palm Island, uh, Rollingston, and through the Harvey Range could all see some very significant rainfall accumulations as a result of this low pressure system's passage, uh, because what it's going to be doing is, as this load draw, uh, draws its moisture through the Gulf of Carpentaria, you can see those winds expected to be uh, kind of going along like this, and then once they get themselves over into the Coral Sea, these winds are going to be blowing in from the northeast, and that's going to pull in a lot of moisture from already a very moisture-laden atmosphere in the Coral Sea, and that will translate to rainfall the second it hits the coastline. And you can see big-time rainfall accumulations right up and down the coastline here. Towns are looking at about 200 millimetres, but this increases dramatically to Rollingston. We're looking at about 400 millimetres coming through. Uh, Ingham about 500, Cardwell also 500 plus, Tully and Innisfail also 500 plus here. These do drop off a little bit for Cairns, about 150 or so millimetres on the forecast for Cairns on top of what they've already received so far. And then up into the Daintree, that increases a little bit again to about 250 millimetres in a few isolated sections of coastline, but I'm not getting my hopes up for significant or ultra significant rainfall accumulations into the Daintree. Now keep in mind for far north Queensland, this is pretty normal for this time of year. I'm not calling for this to be anything sort of insane or anything. Even a metre of rainfall, this has happened before and it happens pretty much every single year, at least once or twice. So the far north Queensland, they're no stranger to this sort of stuff, but we're talking about a very significant flood risk as a result of this low pressure system here. And there is a prolonged period of heavy rainfall coming through, not just for the far north Queensland coastline, but also for northwestern Queensland and the Carpentaria coast, which means basically anywhere between these black lines here, uh, particularly in more flood prone locations, which will be those areas a little bit further inland, are looking at some significant flooding potential. This includes Mount Isa, it includes Townsville, it includes Cairns, it includes Julia Creek, Claude Curry, Normanton, Burkton, Harumba, those locations, all at the risk of flood. Now, there are major flood watches already in place across this part of Queensland, so BOM are not messing around. They're calling for major flooding right out of the gate, and considering these numbers, I have to agree. A lot of rivers are in the firing line. I'll have the details on that in an update later this afternoon. Significant rainfall is now no longer expected across the central Queensland coastline, not at least until 2026. What we're going to be seeing in the wake of this weather system here is likely it pulling out into the uh, Coral Sea once again, and depending on how far south it is, it is, it looks like showers and on and off heavy rainfall will be prevalent right through the first week of 2026, through much of far northern Queensland, and even into parts of the north and the central Queensland coastline as well. This will finally ease off and contract to the north once again around Wednesday and Thursday the 7th or the 8th of uh, January before more low pressure system activity becomes a possibility across far northern Queensland. We're in this prolonged wet period now. Monsoonal bars, uh, uh, bursts typically last about 20 to 30 days or so and we're well and truly within one now so the rain is not going to stop anytime soon. More tropical low activity and potential uh, coral sea tropical low activity is once again expected as we head out towards the first and especially the second week of January so please keep that in mind. Rainfall is not going anywhere anytime soon but after the New Year's, after about the 1st or the 2nd, this rainfall will briefly ease off before picking up once again on the 6th or the 7th of January in a significant capacity. But again, flooding is expected to continue and it's going to be a prolonged weather threat. Let's just briefly talk about southeast Queensland. I want to give a more concentrated weather forecast for southeast Queensland today. A few showers still lingering here and there. The winds are quite strong offshore. We're still looking at these gusts here offshore approaching 15 to 25 knots in a few spots. In fact, increasing to about 30 knots for the northeast of New South Wales. These showers are expected to ease off a little bit as we head out towards later today. There could be an isolated thunderstorm or two inland from central Queensland later today as well. Severe thunderstorm activity is not expected though, but I'll keep tabs on it because again, a lot of our thunderstorm forecasts lately have been dramatic underestimations just because there is a lot more heat in the atmosphere with the development of these tropical lows and the fact that those cool changes do come in a little bit later right now. Monday is expected to be high and dry. Tuesday as well, high and dry to the New Year's period. You can see a couple of thunderstorms do rear their heads through southwestern Queensland on Tuesday and Wednesday. New New Year's Eve may bring a thunderstorm or two. It's looking a bit warm now for New Year's Eve across southeast Queensland, but I don't reckon we're going to be seeing any high and severe thunderstorm activity, particularly with the temperatures here on this forecast. Uh, pushing into the 30s is probably not going to be enough to get the job done.
done for a severe thunderstorm activity, particularly at this time of the year. And if we have a look at convective available potential energy, there is bugger all of it across southeast Queensland on Thursday, the 1st of January. So I don't reckon we're going to be seeing widespread severe thunderstorm activity. And for New Year's Eve, I'm not expecting anything. New Year's Day, this forecast may change in favour of some severe thunderstorm activity, as we've been talking about for the last couple of days throughout the first and potentially the second week of January. But New Year's Eve looking like an excellent weather forecast across southeast Queensland and across much of Australia as well. It is an absolute perler. This is a look at nine o'clock on uh, New Year's Eve. So this is right, uh, or my time, so this is right on midnight for New South Wales, Victoria, Tasmania, and getting close to midnight for Queensland, South Australia at the NT. Still a few hours away for WA. But you can see with that high pressure system expected to properly establish itself in the bite, we will get those cooler winds coming in for Tassie and Victoria. Similar to the Christmas forecast, I'm not expecting anything outlandish in the way of temperatures, but it will still be a little bit chilly across Victoria and Tasmania. The risk of snow, though, is highly unlikely now. Because we'll have that low pressure system approaching New Zealand as well, we will have those southeasterlies and those southerlies coming in for the New South Wales coastline, which means south of the Hunter region, it is expected to be on the cooler side, but still relatively pleasant viewing conditions, particularly if you do have a jumper or a windbreaker uh, on Adelaide as well, looking to be pretty cold as well for New Year's Eve. Things warm up the further north and the further west you go. Again, very similar to New Year's Day. We've got that high pressure, uh, Christmas Day is New Year's Day. We've got that high pressure system in the bite, which means those easterlies coming in across the West Australian coastline, and they will warm up as they move through the wheat belt regions and into the gold fields as well, which means warm temperatures expected across the southwest. It's going to be a perler of a weather forecast on New Year's Eve into early New Year's Day across southwestern WA. Get out there on the water, make some plans right now. This is one of the best forecasts that I've seen in quite a while. Winds will blow up a little bit on Wednesday afternoon and evening, uh, but we do typically expect that a bit of a typical true southwestern WA summer pattern at this time of the year. But again, a perler of a weather forecast. Showers and thunderstorms, though, for northern Australia, particularly across Queensland. We're going to have that rainfall continuing across much of northern, north-central Queensland. And same deal for the Northern Territory as well. Showers and thunderstorms coming in off the Indian Ocean as another tropical low begins to ramp up and build across the West Australian waters. Tropical lows, tropical cyclones, let's talk about them. We've got two systems offshore from Western Australia right now. We have tropical cyclone Grant over here, which is making a meal of some pretty healthy conditions apart from wind shear. A Category 2 strength system tracking off towards the west. It's not expected to get much stronger than where it is now, not at least until it exits the Australian area of responsibility, which should happen later today. And the tropical low 08U, I believe here, well offshore from the West Australian coastline, closer to Indonesia in the Timor Sea. This system is also forecast to track out towards the west, but we're not expecting anything to develop out of this system here. It looks relatively healthy right now as it tracks down towards the West Australian coastline, but this is going to be an interesting one. This is really a bit of an interesting forecast here, and I would just like to say for the Kimberley region, watch this storm very closely. Nothing is going to come of this system today by the looks of things, but likely tomorrow and into Tuesday, we may see a tropical cyclone approach the West Australian coastline, particularly into the Kimberley region. This is very much a system that's going to uh, catch my attention right now. You can see that that has caught me a little bit by surprise. It didn't show up in the research that I was doing for this video here, but yeah, Tuesday, this is going to be interesting. Healthy conditions ahead of it. Icon forecast model has it. Access forecast model has it, apart from it being an elongated mess, but Tuesday afternoon and evening, Broome, uh, Derby, uh, a lot of northern locations into the Kimberley up to about the Mitchell Plateau in this sort of area here. I'd like to say you may have this tropical low swing out and around and then approach you, maybe making a landfall here just towards the north of Broome. In terms of high end impacts right now for Broome, unlikely, but Derby, Honestly, if you want to get ahead of the curve, I'd start preparing for a Category 1 strength tropical cyclone in Derby. You just never know at this point in time. Unlikely, but still a possibility. This is very much a system that I want to keep an eye on right now. Sea temperature is looking very healthy for this system. 31 pushing 32 closer to the coastline. I mean, this is just bath water. And a small system like this one here, which is already looking half decent, will be able to organize very, very quickly. Uh, in fact, I don't believe that it's tracked on the hurricane tracker here, but it will still be an interesting one. Uh, I reckon Bob will pick up on this later today. I, I, I'd have to imagine that they would as well. Uh, in terms of wind shear, if we actually have a look at our 200 HPA winds here, looking really healthy, all things considered. I mean, there's bugger all wind shear for this tropical cyclone, so that's really, really healthy. Yeah, this is a really good forecast of this system right now. You can see I'm kind of making it on the fly, but Northwestern WA, watch out. Consider making some preparations now. There's a tropical cyclone threat coming through, but that is going to do it for today's weather forecast update nationwide. It's an interesting one. It's a detailed packed one. I'll keep you updated on the North Queensland situation. I'm going to have a detailed update on that later today as well on all the ins and outs in regards to rainfall. Again, if you haven't already, please do consider subscribing. Nearing in on 70,000 and also apparently on Facebook, nearing in on 100,000. I can't believe it. So if you want to go and help us out, then please do consider leaving a like and also subscribe. 
to the channel and the page if you haven't already. But that'll do it for me today. Thank you to the channel sponsors. I'll catch you on the next storm. Goodbye.